Guys, I'm just gonna say this is like what Broadway performers have to do when they have to like do the Lion King or Wicked, like deep, and they like have reach the deep in. They have to like reach so deep inside them. I literally to said, to, it. I literally said to myself, I was like, as soon as Shai does his battery voice, you get it together, okay, and you go. So wait, I, wanna, also, I just want to say, Lily just I, compared herself to a Broadway performer. I, I, no, I no, I'm, 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 I'm with you. Welcome to a very special episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast. In this episode's pre-show, one of our hosts, Lily, compared herself to a Broadway okay, performer who has right. to that's get it together. really not fair. She's ill. She's got a fever. She's been throwing up. But she knew. She told us. She said the moment that she heard the buttery <laughs> I hear intro, that buttery voice. She would snap my, I don't want groups. my fans to know. They don't announce the performer's sick before the performance. No, no. Well, you're right. They, they'll announce it afterwards and be like, oh, my God. Adina oh, Menzel my God. Idina Menzel had to do that wicked. And she was so sick. I'm like, how amazing <laughs> she is. All I'm saying is that as soon as I heard that buttery voice, I'm not holding back. Fever or no fever. Do you have a puke bucket next to you just in case? I definitely, as I sat down, was like, I should have brought a plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know how Lily is. <laughs> Becky, how are you? I don't know, but I have so much to say about how I am. I know, but that's okay. why I'm getting to Becky so we can Get come to back. Becky and then we'll come back to me. <laughs> I mean, does anyone really care how I'm doing? Yes. Of you look. I have to do. say, people can't see the video right now, but Becky looks, she's having a good day. She looks rested. Um, her oh, hair's your your hair's happening feed to my feed. Thanks, guys. So I'm doing well because today is Vladimir's birthday. It's my husband's birthday, and we're having a very special birthday day. Shout out to Vladimir. We'll shout out to him again at the end. Um, yeah, it's just kind of like I love birthdays. It's my favorite celebration is a birthday celebration. And so I think everyone just kind of woke up in a great mood today. We had French toast for breakfast, and then I gave him his birthday present which was a poncho which if you know Vlad is actually a very good present. Oh yeah he's just gonna like walk he's gonna walk around the mirror he's gonna walk around the mirror woods in a poncho for hours. Exactly Exactly. one side is a blanket the other side is waterproof. It's actually very cool. And 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 I saw him on FaceTime today and he 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 really he entered a new level of gravitas I think when he had this birthday. Like he woke up looking just a little bit more esteemed and he looks more and more like his dad, who all people will agree is an extremely handsome man. Um, sure. <laughs> oh, Allie talks about it all the time. She's like, Vlad's parents, I want to age that Allie, well. Allie loves a good cleft in a chin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, good, a good, well-aged one. You know, like some men like make their wives get like breast enlargements. Allie's going to be like, shy. <laughs> you need to do the John Travolta butt chin, please. <laughs> A butt, I mean, but, butt, butt chin pronounced. and a silver fox do, or Telly Savalas bald. Those are Allie's three <laughs> favorite looks. Or Terrence Howard. Or Terrence oh, yeah, Howard. or Terrence Howard. She loves Terrence Howard. She loves Terrence mm-hmm. Howard. So now that we know how Becky's doing, which sounds wonderful, sounds like you guys are having a great day, L- mm-hmm. Lily, I, I know I don't even know where to start with how are you doing. We heard how sick you are. Oh, I'm I'm not doing, yeah, let's just, we'll move on from that. I want to hear about to your family. To, I want to hear how, I, how Jose's doing. He's doing good. Okay, yeah, this is what, let me just get, yeah. So last night, I want to talk about two things that coincide together. And um, we in our family, we've talked about this on the podcast multiple times, that we sort of have a bat signal for the, the podcast has a bat signal. I leave it to you, Shai, to animate slash draw slash photograph. Oh, a, like the Friday Night sort Movie of, signal? Yeah, the okay. Friday Night Movie signal. And when somebody calls on us, Mostly each other when we call on each other. But, like, if somebody else, one of our fans calls on us, you have to respond as fast as possible. And so I was having a lovely dinner with my husband last night, and somebody bat signaled us. And and they were asking. It was, like, a situation where they were alone. Um, Alana was alone. Um, Alana Austin, not to be confused with Alana Lons. Right. This is Alana Austin, uh, the Montreal version of Alana. And she uh, texted, was like, 
I need a movie rec. It's Saturday night. I'm alone. No, like I can watch whatever I want. Go. And I was having this like romantic, lovely dinner. And I turned to Hulsa and I was like, remember in Batman? How when the people <laughs> needed him? <laughs> I was like, I'm going to lead with that. <laughs> the people of Gotham needed him. They show, they put they, they put the bat signal, signal out and he responded from far and wide. And he's like, yeah, yeah, where are you going with this? And I was like, we have a bat signal. Now, I may have made it seem like we did not know this person. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not that she's I, a longtime childhood friend that's no, like, doesn't that, matter. that my it's family just, vacations with. I just with. was like, our fans need us. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have have to text for a second and Thanks. do not make him feel left out well typical. i wanted to, i wanted to make him feel included okay so what did he recommend exactly. chainsaw massacre like, on the haunted hill house exactly so i was like why don't you recommend some stuff too thinking like there's no way i'm gonna type any of the recommendations <laughs> but i just wanted like because i knew she was going the more romantic comedy route but i was like then he'll feel involved the problem is he maybe had a few beers and he speaks a different language as his mother tongue. And I guess he doesn't remember any titles for anything. So he starts, and I want to play a quick game. I want to see if you guess the movie title that, oh my he, that he was talking about. Okay. My, so he this now right. so he goes, the you know, game of reading goes, Instagram quotes. <laughs> yeah. So he goes, you know, you have to... Um, Recommend and he mentioned like a bunch of horror movies and like slasher movies and I was like yeah definitely gonna I'm typing those right now and I was just typing not typing any of this right now and then he goes okay you gotta tell her that she's gotta watch the one where um, Chris Isaac has a robot and then she locks him in that house. And I was like, Chris Isaac has a robot. Chris Isaac has a robot. He may have said makes a robot and then locks him in the house. And I was like, Chris Isaac, the singer. And I was like, okay, I, I, I can do this. I was like, I can do this. I'm okay. Cabin I feel like in the mixed, woods. No, ex machina. And I got it. Oh. Oscar, Oscar Isaac, Isaac. It's a robot, and the robot locks somebody else in the house. Not okay. him. Sorry. And I was like, hey, I was Oscar going... Isaac. He's like, that's what I said. I, <laughs> I, I wish going... you'd given me more time to try and guess it, though, because that was like a really good one. I, I was, kind of like. I was going Chris. I was going with the Chris and not the Isaac. I was. I was, I was thinking, thinking was about like Chris Pine, Chris, Chris Pratt. Chris Which Evan, one do they have a uh, robot? Chris. In... Chris... I went. I Thor, went with the um, Hemsworth. With the with the Isaac. Um, and you were just like, well, Chris Isaac was in that thing you do. He plays the <laughs> uncle who records the church That's music. True. <laughs> that is true. Um, and hold on. I have the other one written down. Um, I guess I didn't write it in the notes because I didn't want you guys to have more time to guess. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, Good. so, you know how I thought the professor looked like Ike Barinholtz? Yeah. But I still think he does look ah. like Ike Barinholtz. I Hold on. You Don't you going? think the bass player from Bohemian Rhapsody looks like a young Paul Feig? Yeah, he totally does. He totally does. But he's yeah. also the kid from Jurassic Park, apparently. He is, and the kid from what? Radio Flyer, and the kid from Jurassic Park. Oh, I'm going to have to cope with that. Let's go back to the game. I know. I had to Google a lot. Okay, <laughs> let, let her do the, do the slate. Go, go. So, okay, the next title. So he's like, no, 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 and then you got to... I actually was impressed how quickly I got uh, Ex Machina because I was like Isaacs. Who else is Isaacs? I don't think the actor's right, and because I don't think Chris Isaacs has been in that many movies. And he was like, you know, Isaacs. I was like, oh, uh, do you mean Oscar? I was like, Ex Machina, got it. <laughs> Anyways, um, the next one is he goes, okay, then we're the other movie I thought was one of the best movies I, I've seen, you know, this year, which was this was definitely two years ago, but it's fine. <laughs> he goes, Wendy goes south. Oh, Ingrid goes west. <laughs> Ingrid goes west. <laughs> I was like, when did go south? <laughs> you mean Ingrid goes west? He's like, that's what I said. Directions. And <laughs> He's like, that's what I said, and that's a fantastic movie. That is a hundred percent on a movie I would rent, recommend to anyone who wants. Without like a very previous like discussion about it. No, it's so good. I highly recommend okay. it. Yeah, but not like alone well, when you want to romantic Lily, comedy. We'd like you to come back with more titles that Jose okay. thinks there are movies, and we can play this. We can play this guessing at home. I think you guys like. All right, so I have a uh, I have a story to tell because um, you want to know how I'm doing. 
Yes, yeah. we do. So How are you doing? Ma- mom and dad came to visit again this weekend, and it's been an amazing weekend. We did Hanukkah. Um, we're we're having just the most wonderful time. And one of the things we've gotten into doing with the kids that I've talked about is we watch the Goldbergs. We watch it like it's like our family show that we watch. It's so much fun, and you know we have it on iTunes and stuff, so we're able to watch any random episodes at any given time, and it's on Hulu. And so yesterday evening, mom sat down and said, I want to watch the Goldbergs with you. Because now mom and dad, people don't really know that they don't really watch the show that much. But now they're getting more into it, especially mom. And she sat down and we watched the Hershey Park episode from this season, which is oh, hilarious. That might be one of the funniest. With the scene with the guilt, yep. with the guilt letters and the with guilt the... Letters, yeah. and the- the, the, roller coaster. The, coaster, the roller coaster, the roller coaster punchline is just amazing. So, so we watch that, and as that episode is wrapping, I have to go pick up the food for dinner. The we, the the Mediterranean food we're bringing in for dinner, and I leave mom watching the kids, and dad was taking a nap. And I, as I'm out, I come back a, a little while later, and mom turns to me like very very sheepish as we hear one of the kids upstairs crying and saying she's scared and i say mom the kid's faking she wants attention the younger the younger child i'm like just let her you know get it out of her system and then she'll come downstairs and mom goes yeah or she might be scared because after the goldberg's episode you were watching was over it just went right into the next episode and that episode was the freddy krueger episode freddy krueger. Oh. and so she oh, no. said i said mom i can't believe you watched that with them she said, how was i supposed to know and she said it was a halloween episode suddenly they're in a corn maze and then freddy krueger is chasing them <laughs> she said that my too. older child started weeping and make, make it stop make it stop and then mom's saying i'm trying to get the remotes and trying to turn it <laughs> off and the kids are crying one of them's hiding behind brilliant. Mom. the other one's crying crying and terrified and so as it turned out ali said the same they're thing. not ready for all goldberg's episodes uh, yeah ali said ali uh, so ali sent them down ali sent the younger child downstairs and ali's like oh she's faking being afraid for attention and then we're part way through dinner and i lean over to ali and i said ali don't be mad I think the kids watched the Freddy Krueger episode of the Goldbergs. And she goes, oh, that explains why she was saying she was afraid of a Goldbergs episode. And so That's hilarious. So, and and but, now, now then I'm calming the kids down, playing it really cool, being like, kids, it's just a guy in makeup. In real life, Robert, Robert Unglund is a super nice guy. I'm showing them pictures of my iPhone of him and then putting on the makeup. Like, that would have helped you as a kid. <laughs> exactly. I would have been like, this is bullshit. That guy's coming for me tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, are you kidding me? Freddy Krueger is the single scariest thing in the world to me. And the whole note, if he appeared in any in a television commercial for a soda where he had sunglasses and was playing with puppies nicely, I would have not slept for a week. I have to tell you, I f- even, I mean, I felt uncomfortable during the Goldbergs episode because I am so terrified of Freddy Krueger and any horror movie. So here's what I'll that- say about that episode. A, I think that episode's brilliant, and I love Robert Unglet in the show. And, of course, we watched 10 other Goldbergs episodes in the last 24 hours, so it's not like the kids are scarred from the Goldbergs. But that episode actually is a little bit scary right like there is a little bit of terror especially if you're afraid of freddy krueger it's well done it's and a it, very well done episode. and it makes me want to see adam goldberg maybe do a feature that's like a, a Goonies stranger Things style horror Ooh, that's like oh, a, what was the brilliant. one that we saw that we loved final final girl like, like final the final girls, girls or final something girl. something where he puts his i think little, it's the final girl is it singular or plural? final girls the, the final girls but it's where he puts his like spin on horror. I don't know. Should I may be talking comedy. about the band? Yeah, yeah the I band, think the final the band, girl is or the great. final girl with Zoe Clay's Grace Moretz. <laughs> right? There's a lot of things. Anyways, so right. that's that's where I'm at with that. That's, so that was um, a pretty traumatized. Also, where I was like, it's like if the thriller video was on, and I'd be like, kids, it's just makeup. I saw that thriller video when I was four and didn't sleep till I was thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> You're being generous. So with your team. We're, we've been telling some. Knows. We've been like telling 17. some true stories here today, and there have been some terrific movies out lately. Good segue. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There've been okay. terrific movies lately out about. We've that been are, talking about television and films. <laughs> we've been talking about things, and there are things. some movies that have things in them, <laughs> yeah, and those things are are 
are cars and people and houses and <laughs> but there there's some there t- there's a couple of totally different true stories that we've all watched in the last couple weeks that I think we'll all put down as buys that are terrific movies, but I think they warrant a discussion and a bigger discussion about true story movies. So one of them is Bohemian Rhapsody, and the other one is Black Klansmen, which, by the way, we told Mom and Dad to watch last night, and they couldn't find it in the in the iTunes or whatever, or because they spelt it just without the three Ks in the middle of it, and so they kept looking which- for it. To be fair, I feel like iTunes should have had some sort of keyword search for that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Something like that. That's Anyways, on that. So That's actually not on Mom and Dad. So <laughs> let's, let's just go around, and I would love each of your takes on – there's so many things we could break down about each of these movies. And I act, and Becky and I were talking about how we, I think we want to come back and get some a, a guest to come and break down Black Klansman with us. But Yeah, we're going to do a deeper dive another time because it's too good. It's too good to – Oh, to God, I liked it. Um, yeah. So, but let's just talk about these two movies as true story, you know, biopic style movies. Um, uh, one by one, just knock that down for each of the films. We'll go around. Beck, do you want to start? Sure. Yeah. No. Um, just what do you want me to do? Just, just like impression, because we're not, we're not going to do a deep dive. How, how do so. these movies work as telling ostensibly true stories for you? Well, I think. Um, you know, with, with Bohemian Rhapsody, these days we don't get a lot of melodramas and and they're really hard to do well. And I would actually classify Bohemian Rhapsody as a melodrama and done so, so expertly. Um, you get the main story beats of this band. Um, you The music is impeccable and it really feels like you are part of this larger than life story. This you become part of like they have a mission statement at the very beginning of the film which is oh we're not a band we're a family and then i personally felt like by the end of the movie i was part of that nuclear family um and so i just i i i went into it kind of thinking oh it'll be fun i'll hear some good music but it's not really my style of film and I was just compl- I got completely wrapped up in it. Where by the end, I you know what, I was in tears. What did that for you? Was it the acting? Was it the directing? Was it the performances of the music? I mean, I think it was really the character. Like I know we talk a lot about character development, but it was it was not just developing Freddie Mercury's character, but each of the people around him and kind of thinking of it like the different spokes on this wheel where he's at the center and each spoke is so well developed his connection to each of them and the impact that has on his trajectory and the trajectory of the band and his personal evolution and I feel like in that way it was actually that's why I so felt we're talking so about him in veracity Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay. No, that's, right. that's, so, I thought we were starting with like Black in a, Planet, and that's in, no, and that's in addition to the fact that the music is incredible and you're so amped up and you're like like literally you're like dancing in your seat listening to it and like watching it and the costumes are beautiful and the directing of the performances is exciting. Like it has all of those elements, but I think with I think what happens with these types of biopics is that they they have a lot of style, but maybe will lack real heart or real core. And I and I felt like that was done very well in this film, very genuinely. And so that's that's why I, I felt so impacted by it. Not that it was just an enjoyable experience, but I actually walked away, you know, like emotional from the film. So so and and Lil, how did how did you react to Bohemian Rhapsody as telling a true story? I want to hear what you have to say first, actually, because I actually feel like my point on it does segue into the the telling uh, in the story of Black Klansman. Okay, so so so, so, just editing our own. That's okay. A little little backseat editing now. So uh, uh, so my feeling on Bohemian Rhapsody, and and I've alluded to it a couple of times. I've seen tons of rock movies. I love rock documentaries. I love rock biopics, and I tried to avoid any reviews of this because I was just so excited that they were telling this story. And I and I consider myself fairly familiar with the Freddie Mercury story. There were a few things in the film that I wasn't aware of, but I was aware of a lot of the things that I think... Right, you're that, pretty... You know, you're a music buff, specifically Queen. You've 
delved into like their history. Yeah, I've watched a documentary, the classic album's entry on the making of The Night at the Opera. I've watched a couple of documentaries on Freddie Mercury's life. So when that happens, sometimes I go into one of these movies being like, ugh, they just told the biopic and it's more like an e-true Hollywood story with people acting out the, you know, just like those fake mm-hmm. actors acting things out as if, you know, when they show like a robbery and there's someone who looks like the mysterious right. person. Yeah. Um, but I was, to me, ultimately it comes down to, I agree with Becky on all those things, but for me, what set it apart was... Rami Malek's performance as Freddie Mercury, it was like every muscle of his face and arm was acting because he is playing. I think it. I think it was. He's playing the greatest, or arguably the greatest frontman in the history of music, and he has to make that believable, such that it feels like he's coming out of the screen and and making you feel like you're. Otherwise, it's just karaoke, and. To me, to perform like Freddie Mercury uh, was was the number one thing they had to get right, and that was impeccable. Then the other thing was that the music was absolutely amazing. I've seen many of the performances that they showed in the movie on YouTube and stuff, and it was like I got to be inside the real thing. Um, and then I think the acting all around was terrific. Uh, and I'll say there are these criticisms about how true it was or how perfect it was for the story. In the end of the day, I, and I'd love to put this back to you guys, is how accurate does a true story movie have to be? I mean, as far as movies that are based on a true story, this one was pretty tied to the story with some changes for cinematic reasons and other reasons but I, I thought none of that is particularly consequential because that overall feeling that Becky said she had is what the point of this movie was so I, I, hmm. I loved it. Good good question and really good point, Shai. I think it depends on the story and it depends on the movie Okay. Like um, I think it really is case specific and how they treat it And I understand why, if it was a different movie, I might not care as much, but I do understand why people are vehemently upset. Like, there are, there's a contingency, I'm not going to say Last Jedi upset, Shai, like, I wouldn't go there, but there is a contingency, right, there there is a contingency of people online and critics, uh, especially movie critics, who have taken up with the fact that, you know, had taken issue with the fact that certain major uh, points of information are changed and uh, things are added that weren't really there. And I think it's because in this case, his life was such a mystery, his personal Mm -hmm. life, his real person is such Mm -hmm. a mystery. Today is such a mystery that any shred of truth from this specific story, any slice of reality people hold on to for him because nobody really knows really who he was and he liked it that way kept it that way still keeps it that way he's designed it that way and so when with the permission of the closest people in his life ever he they took some liberties everybody at this point has to be like okay well they chose to tell a story a certain way to give a reaction like what becky had and we had right to to move the story along because in the end you know certain details aren't that important and i think people are like oh no no but they are because this is what the truth of freddie mercury is and you're messing with it when the whole quote-unquote truth is bullshit like that's not the point in this story i think people got Uh, upset uh, about it because uh, uh, his his life is such a mystery i'm not sure if you guys ever saw the movie i'm not there it's the one where they tell yes, Bob Dylan's Bob Dylan. story with mm-hmm. seven yeah. different actors and seven sure. different mm-hmm. He, I would argue, is probably, Blanchett's amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, I would argue, is the most enigmatic musician person of all time. I don't believe a single word of anything he writes about himself or question <laughs> sure. he <answers>. He's like, it's <laughs> which, almost like he's, you, I don't think you should believe about any artist. You're not and, the artist is not responsible for explaining. I don't think their work with their quote unquote truth. So they made this movie where they had different actors play him in completely exaggerated, almost fanta- fantastical versions of his life. And to me, I enjoyed that a thousand times more than the like four-hour right. Martin Scorsese like, have Peter, Paul, and Mary and all of the other people say all the details that you already know about Bob Dylan. <laughs> right. Like, but I think these are, these case, characters are you, are fictional you in had, a way. And Shai, you mentioned this to me previously. This movie has been, been trying to be made for so many years. They nailed it on representing him exactly. They didn't have seven different actors. They had one who freakishly brought you so close to him that for people who have not been able to see him alive, right, ever, quote, unquote, performing live, he's right there on the big screen in front of you and you're, like, getting chills. And I think that that 
you know, is a bit of a conundrum in terms of the truth because he nails it so clearly. Yeah. Um, in that sense, uh, I, I, I'll, can I tell you what I thought of it? Yeah. And mm-hmm. then set, and then take us to Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was very cool. I got to see it in a theater by and, myself. And you are the biggest Queen fan of this whole group. That is one of the like I, random I things where you. like I'm like, do I know you? When you when you told me when I was visiting, you're like, I'm the biggest Queen fan. I'm like, it, I've known sure. you for thirty years. That I, I that I do know. That I do know and, from. And from recently, Charles there was a cover band huge. playing in the plaza here, and there was a Queen song, not like one of the most known Queen songs playing, but you know. And whatever they they did a cover of Queen, and Dad was here, and he turns to me and he's like, "I've never heard that Queen song." I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Are you my father?" I was like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "Wait, you like Queen?" I was like, "I'm sorry, do I need to wear a hat?" Yes, <laughs> I like. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think a movie. I'm just gonna say, I think you know a doc or sorry, a, a bio, even a doc film is good when after you must go down the YouTube rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. And immerse yourself in that person because the movie wasn't enough. Which happened uh, to I think all three of us after uh, we yes, walked out of 100%. that film. Like we I literally came 100%. home and, and other people our Spotify I've spoken was, to was our Spotify yeah. exclusively clean and, queen for like and three weeks songs after. that I had never heard before, songs that I hadn't heard enough. Like I went, you know, the B sides, and I think I've heard that from a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And to me, it was like I wanted more. And I wanted, and I wanted the salacious details. I wanted to understand his loneliness. I wanted him to turn around and explain to me, like, and and it's not possible, and it's tragic and sad. But I think even if he was alive, I don't know if we would get that. Like, that's the whole point. And I like that that came across. That they switched around the dates of when he found out he had AIDS or yeah, HIV. No, AIDS. He had AIDS at that point, right? Um, I mean, it's his private medical business. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, I it's not like everybody right. knows the, these things. Right. right. When they switch around the dates and he finds out before Live Aid or he finds out after, does it, the guy finds out something horrendously tragic? It, does it matter doesn't for the matter. film? It doesn't matter. In his real life, I'm sure it mattered, but not he, not for the film. For the, well, no, I would, I would argue like the reason that the reason why you change the dates for a movie is because Perfect. like Shai said, you're trying to evoke a feeling and the way that you do that is by constructing an arc, right? And you have to take your audience through these beats and, and build and upon that. Sure. And so a very important climactic moment needs to happen at a certain story. Like you have to, you also have to decide in this person's life, where do you begin the story and where do you end the story? Hundred percent. And then you have to make all of the information work within that so that you are brought through a trajectory. And so it actually really is important in constructing a script in a film to say, you know what, this might not be 100 percent accurate, but we're, we have a goal. And the goal is to make people feel a certain thing and understand the person in a certain way. So, plus, Live Aid was such said... a good choice. Wait, Live Aid was such a good choice because we, oh, yeah. we got Hammer to Fall and Radio Gaga. Yeah. And at that point in the movie, <laughs> I was like... Uh, they only showed a rehearsal of Hammer to Fall. I better get a real Hammer to Fall. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and I think Becky always, explain, you know, as Becky's always made it very, you know, a very good point about good films is that, and Shai, you've repeated this many times, is the stakes have to be there. Yeah. I have. And you need to have. And they had in, in real life, they performed. So Live Aid was July or August. It was a summer. They had performed in May of that year together. So in the movie, they make it seem like they hadn't performed in years. They say, we haven't performed in years. And they, you know, had to rehearse and all that. They had just recently performed in real life. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. It makes it, it makes it more exciting. It was just exciting. There was other controversies, you know, that they looked over, but you can't put everything in. I understand yeah. that. And I think the, other, the only other thing is the criticism of... His personal sex life, I would say, like, or you know, his sexual orientation, they give you a clear sense that he struggled and that he, you know, goes down a path that he's, uh, you know, discovering. But that Mary Austin clearly is someone who's extremely important to him, and that's how you do with sex. Yeah, and that's and that was a, and that was a known thing that's always part of the story. So I also feel like like people yeah. have to give her his due. He did leave her everything. Everything. And it, Jim Hutton is that the name of the mm-hmm. the guy yeah, who his, he yeah. left his Boyfriend. his last his last um, partner, um, the guy who left the foundation to. Like they also did a. I think they did a beautiful job bringing that character in because mm-hmm. that like that love story may not have even been time wise part of part of the story but the the whole conversation scene they have together was i think one of the most beautiful scenes in the movie in the middle of the movie and like yeah. like um, you know if someone's like oh you can't prove to me it happened on that date i'm like uh, i 
You miss the point. I mean, the last like, day is okay. a bit silly. Yeah. Like, Live Aid. He so, introduces his boyfriend to his parents. Like, it's not realistic. We get it. But it's emotional. So I'm just going to say one quick thing. The AO scene, when he finds out, when he speaks to the uh, doctor in that hallway, was yeah. beautifully done. It was brilliant. Very poignant. And I think that they were able to touch on it without going into the depths of it. So, so I think that is... So, I think that scene is a great example of how do you bring context without unpacking something. Because in a film, you have to choose what you're going to unpack and what you just simply can't. And this is a film about Queen. It's a film about his life. And we are going to give the context and explain how he died. But we can't necessarily add another hour to the film to unpack but it. And that also, moment... He tell people. Exactly. And that moment, I think, gives know. you so much information and so much emotion without having to have three scenes or five scenes that dig deep into it. I think you get a lot from that, not, and that's not very a, well done. Not everything right. has to be a 10-episode Netflix series. Okay, Lily, take us into Black Take us into Black Klansman in the sense that so there are things that were added or taken away from the story in Bohemian Rhapsody, which is based on a true story, obviously, and I think they added to the film. In one of the most interesting parts of Black Klansman, and I don't know if this, I to me this is a spoiler, but it's actually not. But I didn't want to say anything to anybody because I was so impressed with how it was uh, treated during the movie. Was the Adam Driver character in in the film? And so the real, so the the movie uh, for those who don't know is about um, a black, a first black cop at a Colorado Springs precinct um, in the seventies who just decides to call up the Ku Klux Klan one day and chit chat. And he basically decides to infiltrate by just ranting racist, horrible things. And then they're like, Hey, uh, you want to join? But he's black. So clearly he can't. So he has a fellow cop do it for him. And they're like a tag team um, to sort of try and like take down this chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. And so in the in the real life, his partner was not Jewish, um, but in the film, they make Adam Driver's character Jewish, and I just think it was a fascinating opportunity in the film. I mean, I, the movie's not about just about anti-Semitism. Obviously, it's about racism, and um, you know, the very too very too com uh, too current top too many current topics in this film mm -hmm. in terms of because it's 2018 um and i just thought that that just a segue that that is an interesting addition to the film because it's so much not just about one topic and then to, to explore a whole in, uh, other side to the film of having somebody struggle to be their their other identity which is not visible like he's he's white, mm -hmm. Adam Driver is white, but yet the Ku Klux Klan would hate him just as much. Oh, and they try to prove and he's they, Jewish they try multiple to prove times he's Jewish. In, right. in the movie. In, in the movie, which I just thought was a, a very interesting way to elevate the film for further conversation, even though it's not actually true. Uh, based on it, otherwise, true story, Ron Stallworth is the actual cop. I read an interview with him where he said pretty much everything is the way it went. <laughs> so I, I'll say I'll say that. Um, so Spike, I've had a, a like a, 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 a evolving relationship with Spike Lee's films. I, right. I was always like, he's a great filmmaker, and I was like, I like about half of his films, and then there's a, another half that that don't do it for me. Um, and then I had had a conversation with my friend uh, at, at my previous job. Her name was Kate Art, and we had this extremely deep conversation where she's like, I want you to go back and look at Spike Lee again. And, and, and one of the things I was criticizing with Spike Lee was, was this sense that it was always this sense that he, I felt like he was communicating that he was wrong, that other filmmakers were getting elevated, but, but he wasn't being recognized you know, as a genius. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, you're a genius, but you know, it's not like Summer of Sam is a perfect movie, so you know, chill out. Right, uh, right. And she urged me, she says, go back and watch Do the Right Thing. And she said, so the reason and bamboozled, she's, she, and bam bamboozled but, but, but is I, phenomenal. Bamboozled but do I had, the right thing. But bamboozled, yeah. I had seen when it came out, and I loved it. And that's always been one of my favorite Spike Lee movies. And she said, go back and watch, go back and watch, um, uh, do the right thing. And she said, what you don't realize is, is that part of why he had such attitude and had such attitude, although I think he's really uh, different now, um, is that he knew that he was creating things that were 
beyond his time. Like they were so far beyond mm-hmm. his time, and they were also they were cutting edge and at the same time timeless. And so he was, and he was also had these very powerful messages. And they, and he and think about being that young person creating that and being so frustrated. And I said, huh, okay. So I went back and I watched Do the Right Thing. And first of all, absolutely incredible movie. Yep. Second of all, if it came out this year, it would win Best Picture. Meaning yep. that movie. Oh yeah, hundred percent. One hundred percent timeless. Like, like meaning, timelessly and, brilliant. And, and I was a yep. little kid when that came out, and so I didn't really get the you know. And I said, oh my goodness, now I get it. Uh, Spike Lee, you can love you know. I don't love Twenty Fifth Hour, for example. I think that movie's kind of boring. Um, I like that movie. <laughs> but 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 I came to so. Black Klansman is the first Spike Lee movie I've seen since seeing Do the Right Thing. And I went into it with that open mind, but also a little bit anxious, right? This is Spike Lee going right into, you know, hot issues that are, you know, he's using a story from the 70s to talk about things that are going on right now. And on top of that, he's wrapping himself around a Jewish character in a way that I don't think I've ever seen him do before in, in this much in this much significance. And there was a certain amount of anxiety as a Jewish person watching this, being like, oh, how's this going to get handled? What's Adam Driver's character going to do? You know, how are they going to play out this relationship? And I, 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 when they get to the end of the movie, I won't, you know, not without giving any spoilers, just like I was relieved not only because the movie was brilliant and I, and I just, I loved it, but I, I loved the way he handled Adam Driver and I loved the way he handled yep. his relationship with uh, Ron Stallworth. And, and last but not least, John David Washington, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm a huge Oof. fan of him on baller, Ballers. This is only the beginning of John David Washington. He is uh, unreal. Uh, I mean, Amazing. To jump off of what, what you were saying, I think one of the, the really important points that the Adam Driver character brings and how it contrasts the Ron Stallworth character is this idea of like getting to to what extent do we choose our identity and with Ron Stallworth, he, you know, his choice to be a cop and what that means to other people in the black community and hiding that fact. And then you sort of see that mirrored in in the in Adam Driver, the Jewish cop who's technically Jewish because of his bloodline, but in no way identifies as being Jewish until all of a sudden someone's pointing a finger at him, telling, you know, saying you're Jewish and then going, wait a minute, what does that actually mean? Is this a, do I have a choice in the matter? And I think that these are just like regardless of all the con- the issues that are going on today, these are just very powerful identity stories. And that's why this film, while it's important in today's, like, you know, current events and political climate, I think it actually is very timeless in how we process our identity and which parts of it do we create and which parts of it are are just sort of are put on us, you know? Um, and so that was, I found that to be very powerful. I, I, I also, I'll also say, I, you know me, I fall asleep during movies. We started this at like <laughs> 9 or 10 o'clock at night. I was riveted until the very end. Every actor was amazing. And I want to give a lot of respect. And Lily, you need to IMDb because I don't know her name. The woman um, who played yeah, yeah. The, cake, uh, the KKK guy's Laura wife. Laura Harrier. Oh, my. Oh, no, oh, oh, though. Sorry, I thought you were saying the girlfriend. No, no. I thought she was she, awesome. She, she was terrific. She was in Spider-Man. Um, no, I'm talking about the woman who played the KKK Who's, who's not wife. a real. That's, she's not, that whole bomb thing isn't real. Well, no, that, that, whole, that, isn't, that whole isn't yeah. real, but her character. She was amazing. She was I excellent. gave her tremendous credit because she played. It was the, not an easy the, part. The, the character who made my skin crawl the most in that movie was her character. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ashley Atkinson. Did it fantastic. make you anxious to like during the KKK scenes, the things that they were saying oh, and then yeah. at, to, like it like and it made Adam, me so nervous. And when Adam Driver It should. I, I, I hope things. I hope not just because we're Jewish, like I hope anybody just as like a human should, being just as a human being, because I I mean it, we come we're I mean, I, I assume if you're black it makes you nervous. I think being Jewish we were sitting there being like, Oh shit and then I think as a human being I hope everybody can identify with which it's is why like, I'm glad he broadened it a little bit. Just a little bit that he could as a director because it's a it's a it's a human emotion that I think everybody yeah. needs to feel it's not just yeah. about the color of your skin but obviously in this situation Ron Stallworth couldn't get away from that yeah and, and I want to say I appreciate that the way that so I appreciate that there's like the ending of the film and then the epilogue and it, I appreciated that that the film in a way has this like 
very happy ending. Like the ending is like it's funny and happy. Pro- it's probably kind of the happiest ending of any Spike Lee movie I've right. ever seen. But then, but then he he hits you over the head. He hits, <laughs> no, he has this happy ending, and you're like, oh, ha 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 ha! Mm-hmm. This is actually how well this is all working out. And then it's like cut to. The reality kind of saying movie. this is just a movie. What I'll, all I've done for you is presented essentially a piece of, you know, fiction, really. Fiction, yeah. This is a movie and we can all walk away from the movie patting ourselves on the back and feeling good. But this is actually the implications of what was happening in this movie. This is the reality of it. And that's where I like I got like very upset and I was very, very emotional after. But um, I thought that was, again, a really intense contrast. I, think, I don't think if he hadn't put it a good in. Trick. If he didn't put it in, I don't think anybody would have been like, well, he's not showing the real problem of racism in America. No. Like, he didn't have to put it in. Because just to, for people who didn't see it, they put in they some clips montage. of the Charlottesville. Yeah, uh, yeah Charlottesville and David Duke, currently today, who's alive and well. God bless. Got to <laughs> so, give props to Topher Grace for, for playing that. That was so well. Topher, Topher, Topher yeah. Grace has, on many occasions, played despicable characters. Shy. Get Shorty TV show. Yeah. Topher Grace right. turning up and doing these, like, disgusting parts, but, like, really good, great. Well. Good for <laughs> really, him. Really, because really well. that is, you, you, like, you're going to go down, like, you're going to go, you know, and, and say, yeah, I'm going to play a an extraordinarily controversial, despicable Hated. character. <laughs> And I thought he did it in in uh, he was great. That part of the movie is but true. But he also made my but he made my skin crawl. And and I oh, give him yeah. a lot of respect for being able to like be like yeah I'm an actor and I'm gonna have people remember me in this skin crawling role. Of but this- also he was so likable and friendly and helpful and oh, it, until- you know, it, the, the, he he the the I find he does it so well so like slimy. he's not just gross and slimy he's also presentable and seems like a nice person do you know yeah, what i mean until, like he, until his true colors are shown and then he's sure, like vindictive sure. evil okay but so yeah he, uh, he did really take that picture yeah that, that whole thing and their <laughs> friendship is true that whole thing is really true that, that, is, that, that is wild um okay so as before we wrap up we want to do a little by render meh uh, and uh, we're going to do some buy, rent, or rent on true life movies. We're specifically leaving out history and war movies, and we're leaving out sports movies because we just did a oh. lot. Of, we did a lot of sports right. movies okay. recently. So let's. Lily came up with some great themes here: wilderness movies, Into the Wild, <laughs> Wild, and 127 Hours. Lily, go. Oh, I have to go first? It's so hard. Okay, 127 hours I'm going to buy, maybe? Because of all the yeah. arm, arm, cause the arm no, cause of the arm spooning? I don't know. Your choice. I you guess, said it. I guess yeah. I'm buying Wild. I'm going to buy Wild. I thought she was brilliant. I think that story is beautiful. I thought Laura Dorn, Dern was amazing. That's to talk about somebody who's in the movie just for a few minutes, but I thought her just presence was, was outstanding. Um, I'm going to buy Wild. I'm going to rent 127 hours because I was riveted when I was watching it. And I thought that story, I thought they did a great job telling a story which seems, I mean, it's just a guy kind of stuck between two rocks. So I think that the, the film itself is really good. And while Into the Wild is gorgeous, I can only see it once because it's incredibly sad. I love Into the Wild. That is my buy. I'm going to rent Wild and I'm going to meh the James Franco arm spooning movie. Uh, into the Wild also has one of the greatest soundtracks ever that any vendor It's Pearl Jam. Yeah. I'm gonna do a full agree with Shy. Buy Into the Wild, amazing soundtrack. Rent Wild because I haven't seen it and I would genuinely like to see it. So oh, that's like a real it. and, beautiful movie. And I'm gonna meh 127 hours because I saw it once, one and done with that one. No, thank you. Next. Okay, space movies. <laughs> How come space there, just, I'm just, not on I'm just Because it has to be a true story. It's no. a true oh, story by you know, category. It's not a true story. H- hidden yeah. hid, hidden right. Figures, Apollo 13. Is the aviator a space movie? Well, space. I mean, he the flies aviator? the plane. But is the I mean, plane I mean, I in say, space? I think like a point. And come up with another space Yeah, the, the right stuff. First okay, Man. Okay, sure. I mean, first Man I literally just came man. out. Why we haven't seen that? 
I don't know. These were suggestions, you guys. Oh, yeah. I was like, it's so basic. I'm gonna buy it hidden figures. Gap for it to count. I'm gonna buy know. hidden. I'm gonna buy hidden figures. I'm gonna rent Apollo 13, and I'm gonna meh the Aviator, or a third okay. any other space movie. I'm gonna meh. All right. I'm gonna one. buy Apollo 13 because yeah. Tom yes, Hanks. Right. All the time, like of course, Tom Hanks is going in my in my buy. I'm gonna rent Hidden Fingers because I think it's a wonderful movie, especially to watch with like young children. It's a great family movie, and I don't think we need to even discuss the Aviator. Go, Lily. Same. All right. Back. All right. Now, last but not least, Lily just put these as mixed bag <laughs> because Ca- catch- they're really great movies in their own right. They are true stories, but I could not break my head putting them into a category. Cat- well, these are great ones. I mean, these are excellent movies. Catch Me yeah. If You Can, which these is one of my really favorite good. movies ever. Oof. Aaron Brockovich, King's Speech. Because in my head, I was like, Aaron Brockovich, The Firm, Pelican Brief. The firm and is then I'm like, story? those are not none of them are true stories <laughs> except for Aaron Rob- Rockovich. The Pelican Brief has Julia Roberts. Lily what about um, uh, what's a, what's fine. another true Lily, the story? Pelican Brief, the Rainmaker, and the Rainmaker, and, uh, and what about and Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets? Lily, go <laughs> true stories. <laughs> okay, so these I, are actually true I, stories. I have answers on this mixed bag. I feel strongly about. Go ahead, go. Okay. Cash me if you can is 100 percent a buy. I own it. I've watched it a million times. I love, love, Please. love that movie. <laughs> Aaron Brockovich is a rent, and I don't like the King speech. It still annoys me that that won an Oscar. Um, Catch Me If You Can is the type of movie where if I'm scrolling through something and it just turns on partway through, I have to sit down and watch till the end. Absolutely. Because it's so amazing. It's like hypnotic. It's so good. It, hypnotic is a great way to describe it. So, uh, it's Amy Adams in that. I think that's one of yeah. my first And it's, yeah, the, yeah, it's yeah. maybe the my favorite. I mean, I don't always love Leo, but that's one of the movies where I Wait, love what? him. Sorry? What? I don't that's always weird. love him. I don't love mm-hmm. Titanic. I don't love... Well, that's not Helio. The, the, the beach. I, I'm never going to see The Revenant, but... Never? Oh, The Revenant's really oh, good. Revenant. <laughs> that was one of the movies he suggested for Alana to see. El, what does he call it? El Urso? I, no, he just goes El Revenant. <laughs> it was, oh, right. And the, so, Becky, where are you on that? And then we're going to wrap. And then... Uh, I don't know. I guess Aaron Brockovich is my rent because that was pretty amazing, but it's so long. But I guess I would still choose that over the King's speech. Like, do I really care that there was a king who had a hard time speaking? Not really. You know. (laughs) (laughs) Poor king. He had a stutter. Okay, Uh, so I'm going to break the mold and buy my Aaron Brockovich. Love that movie. I've seen that so many times. She won the Oscar for it. I'm going to rent Catch Me If You Can because if you told me right now that we had nothing to watch but I could rent that, I would spend money on it for Mm -hmm. sure. And um, King's Speech, I'm going to admit, but I really liked it when I saw it. I just, I think a man is a great definition for me is when you liked it, but you don't need to see it ever again. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a, yeah, that, that's that a good, is not, not a bad movie. That's a good that's definition a of meh, but, I would, but it's I would not, say like, meh. I would say rewatchability <laughs> is a big thing in our family. Like, uh, that's a yeah. compliment Rewatchability for sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's go to shout outs. Okay. So go back. I want to shout out to my husband, Vlad, on his birthday. Happy birthday, Vlad. I love you so Happy much. Happy birthday, Vlad. And uh, you're my you're one so and tall. only special shout out. That's all. That's, That's it. it. Just he, he's the, he gets the sole shout out this week because it's his birthday. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. Okay. And you know what? Oh, oh, my gosh. I forgot about a whole thing. And I actually also, sorry, you're not my one and only shout out. I want to shout out <laughs> to our cousin, Jeremy, because he went with me earlier this week to see a movie called Pick of the Litter, which is adorable. It's a documentary about the life. It's, it's a documentary about guide dogs and like the training of puppies to turn them into seeing eye dogs. And you follow them for like two years from the day they're born until they become and they seeing eye dogs. puppies to the screening and they show. brought puppies to the screening that are in training to become so, seeing I eye think dogs. The, the, the movie theater industry wouldn't have such a problem if yeah. every right. time you went there were puppies <laughs> they'd be selling out the so, cinemas all over the world really do comfort puppies that. Like, like I think can... it's a great it's a great movie to watch with kids I, I think Tali would flip for this okay. movie and you, you should mean, show that's her super. we watched we, we, so you you pick of the litter. we watched Hotel for Dogs Snap, do you, you mean your youngest? She's her oh. name. Sorry. She's um, I really recommend this movie for, I really recommend this movie for uh, kids, especially. It's really fun. Shy, I think your children will definitely love it. So that's a good segue to my shout out. I want to shout out to the movie 
Hotel for Dogs. Hotel for Dogs. I knew you were going to say that. We watch Hotel for Dogs. And it's about these orphans who build all these ways of walking dogs as they hide out in an abandoned hotel. And the kids loved it. There were puppies. But then at one point in the movie, uh, the siblings who are, who are foster right. orphan siblings get separated, like the Child Protective Services, played by Don Cheadle. The acting, the acting powerhouses in this movie. Literally <laughs> made one of the most phenomenal movies ever in Hotel Rwanda. Did he win an Oscar for Not only Pretty was John sure Cheadle in it, but also Troy Gentile, who plays Barry on The Goldbergs, is in it. And that so, makes more sense. And so, at one that point, the, the siblings Sorry. get separated, Sorry. and my kids burst into tears. We're sad crying. Don't take my sister away. Don't take so my good. sister away. Very and then they, this weekend. Then they reunited, and then my kids were saying... We're happy crying now. And then today they were emotionally torturing each other and wanted nothing to do with each other. My other my other shout outs go to Noah Allen, who went to camp with us back in the day, started listening to the pod. He's catching up, so he'll get to this episode probably in about in a year, year from now. But he's blazing his and way through. And to his lovely wife, Rena Weissman. And his well, lovely yeah. wife, Rena. Awesome. Who is one of my very, very dear camp friends back in the day. Um, Lots of love to Rena. I'm going to explain to you this whole thing, Twitch, that I fell into, and but I, not we don't have time for me to go into it now, but I am following this person named Amber Plaster, who is pretty cool, and she's on Twitch at Artemis and Apollo Gaming. Um, and then I'd like to give a shout out to Monica Smith, who is the the sister in law and guitar player of our amazing neighbor and dear friend, who's an incredible artist, Justin Jones. Uh, she and I had an awesome conversation about podcasts the other day, so hopefully she will catch this episode when it's on, and she'll hear this and hear this shout out. As she's driving around, she rocks. Lil, you have a shout out? I do, but I'm sorry. Are both your neighbors named Jones? Yeah, I have two. Like, neighbors. are you in like a weird? Do you, are you in like a Truman Show type situation, and you don't even know it? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, or nice. they're both in witness protection. Or you're in witness protection. <laughs> or they're that would CIA be really agents. Funny. Lily, don't even joke. That could be like a thing, and you're tipping someone off. <laughs> <laughs> Both his neighbors' name are Jones. How America? How America are you, Shy? Okay. It's very American. All right, Lily, g- give us your shout outs um, and tell us where people giving, can find you. All right, I'm giving my shout out to Sierra Burgess is a loser on Netflix because I guess our shout outs are now our recommendations. <laughs> so, um, did you like it? I named I. Uh, I need. Did you like it? to have somebody else watch it so I could do a cultural studies analysis of it. I'm sure Lons will will get in on that. Lons, if you're listening, please tweet at me. Please. At Lily. (laughs) That's not my my Twitter. At (laughs) G.K. Gomez. (laughs) At Lily K. Gomez. That's not my Twitter, guys. It's Chichi K. Gomez. Tweet at me. I need to break this down. And I'm going to leave a question into the ether. Were 80s rom-com, teenager rom-coms, Ha- have this much to unpack or am I just no. unpacking now stuff like blockers and Sierra Burgess? No, Zillers there was or... not much. There was no depth to 80s rom-coms pretty whatsoever. Pretty no depth. Zero depth. Rom- the biggest pretty thing pretty in Pretty in Pink is that it's like has to do with class, but like that's This is class? Like the barely? Body image? This is a lot. There's, there's like a lot in this movie. I'm not having finished. I have like 20 minutes left. So I, I don't know how it ends yet, but I just... I, if I thought Lily said she's not finished her shout-out, that she has 20 minutes left. I just want to be clear. Okay. <laughs> well, you guys decided to merge recommendations and shout-outs, so it's not my fault. I'm going to shout-out to Paul Suwan, who... I think I'm pronouncing that right. Who uh, I saw my post to you, Shai, on your birthday. Uh, wrote, because I mentioned that you're my podcast co-host. He wrote on my Facebook, being like, you have a podcast? And I was like, oh, yes, I do. And I mentioned this podcast to him. And so hopefully he'll become a new listener because he said he'll check it out. So I promised to give him a shout out. I met Paul at a Wilco concert here in Tenerife. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Fun. He's a huge Wilco fan and music fan and had followed them on tour. It was like, like following their concerts in Europe. And he came down to Tenerife. Um He's from the States, but came down to Tenerife and they were playing at a very small auditorium, like a small room in an auditorium. And I grabbed a ticket, went by myself. And um, after the show, we, we ran to each other, chatted it up, our Facebook friends since. And um, by way of Wilco, hopefully we uh, got a new listener. That's awesome. So, shout out to him. 
even mm-hmm. though I don't like Wil- Wilco, but I'm... Which, I mean, you should not say that I'm after shy. I just said it. It's but, like, I, but I'm pleased that Wilco is bringing us well, the podcast Well, I like I'm Wilco. A major My Wilco name fan, is so. Becky. I'm one of the co-hosts, Wilco, and I like you. Good for you. I know. I like Paul. I like Paul more than Wilco. What Becky. if Wilco then listens and then hears that you don't Wilco like them? Listens, if Wilco listens if Jeff to this, listens, I take I'm it back. I'm quitting this band and joining an, their band. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm done with you guys. I'm, I'm taking it back if Jeff Sweetie ever listens to this <laughs> Becky where can people follow you at paper BK princess on Twitter and uh, people can follow me at pancake for a table on Twitter and Instagram and you can follow everything we do at pancake for a and Friday night movie pod.com please rate and review us on iTunes and other places that you listen to podcasts we're going to All-Star Comic-Con in June 2019. We're thrilled that they're making lots of amazing guest announcements, including they announced the legendary actor C. Thomas Howell is going to be there, star of The Outsiders and Red Dawn and a bunch of other things, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, and uh, so we're thrilled to have a booth there at that at that con, which is getting closer. I know it sounded like it was far away, but now it's only a few months away. And um, with that, the music from time. Yeah, has a good time. Has a good time. Look that's at it. you. We have the big philosophy this episode. Uh, now, <laughs> let's dance. The music is kicking in. I love you guys. This has been super fun. Isn't that funny? Well, time goes on, events get closer to us. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love you guys. Bye. Um, love you. Bye. 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 I see you have all the stuff behind you. <laughs> like all the stuff. That you're just filled with stuff. Yeah. There's no. like wood carvings and djembes and poster tubes and it looks like some sort oh, of you can see the whole Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Believe it or not, it's super organized in here. Or not. No, no, no. I, I know not. where I know where everything is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>